The object bed for Dolby Atmos. I've been seeing some videos popping up in my feed lately, and people are talking about this thing called an object bed. And today I want to talk about what is the object bed or an object bed and why I don't use one and why not everybody uses one. So let's jump in. First of all, we should review some stuff. And by the way, there are chapter markers in the video. I always put chapter markers. Some of this might be a little bit of review. So if you want to skip around to the stuff that you're looking for, you know, please jump around so that you can skip the stuff you already know. But first of all, I think we should review what is the bed in the first place. What is a bed when it comes to Dolby Atmos? And I'm going to read right off of Dolby's website. This is their explanation. A bed is a channel-based premix or stem. And by the way, whenever whenever they're saying stem, you could also think bus, if that makes a little more sense to you. A bed is a channel-based premix or stem that includes multi-channel panning and does not need dedicated panning via Dolby Atmos metadata. Bed can be thought of as a traditional channel-based stem with the rules and expectations of stem configurations such as stereo, 5.1, and 7.1. So they're fixed locations in space that are tightly constrained to traditional speaker environments, including theatrical environments where a speaker array might be used. And we're going to come back to this array thing because for most engineers who are working in music for Dolby Atmos, they are not familiar with this concept of an array. And it is kind of an important component when we start talking about the bed. So the bed, basically, it's it's a channel-based bus, and it's in our kind of traditional speaker locations. So, you know, left, center, right, left side, right side, left rear, right rear, and then there is a height component to it. The height component in the bed that is in Atmos, it's only two channels, um, and that has to do with this array thing that I'm going to come back to a little bit later. So the thing with the bed is we always have a bed in any Dolby Atmos mix that we're doing. You have to have one bed in your setup. If it's a music mix, most music engineers are only using a single bed in their Atmos deliverables. If we move into the world of audio post-production, doing audio for video, TV, film, that sort of thing, we're probably going to start seeing multiple beds because the post guys, they like to break this up so that you have a different bed for things like dialogue, music, effects. And in effect, they're creating stems with beds, which gives you some different options when it comes to delivery time. And it, there can be a lot of power in that. But for music, we're usually just doing a single bed. So what's an object bed? An object bed is when we create the bed for Atmos, but instead of using the actual Atmos bed, we use objects instead. And this might be a little easier to understand if I just create one. So I'm going to go into Pro Tools here. We'll go into Track Presets because there are track presets to create this. I'm going to go Avid, and then we'll go Dolby Atmos. In these presets, you can see there's a couple of different options. There's ones with objects, and there's ones without. The options without objects would create buses that use the Dolby Atmos bed, the bed that is a part of Atmos. The object ones, on the other hand, will create object beds. So I'm going to do 714 objects because we're mixing in Atmos. We need to be at least 714. Hit create, and there we go. So now what we have is we have all of these different, basically, buses that are going to objects. But to make this a little clearer, I'm going to route a test signal to our object bed. Turn this on. So now let's go back to our renderer. All right, let's do that there. 
and let's pop this. No, not size. We want size. Okay. When you see this in the Atmos renderer, if you're looking at an ADM that somebody else mixed, this is a good indication that somebody used an object bed because now we can see all of our different objects and where they're panned. And you can just see that they're panned to the same locations as the bed. If I take our test signal and route it to the bed, all of that goes away. We still have our meters here with information, but we're not going to the objects anymore. So that is an object bed. Why did anybody come up with this? Why did people start using an object bed instead of just using the bed that is built into Atmos? The engineer I credit the most with creation of the object bed, and I don't think he was the only one who did it. I think it was him and some of the other engineers when they were starting out working in Atmos for music. And this is going back to even before before it was even available to us. And that would be Steve Genowick. Steve has said in interviews, the reason why they started doing the object bed was they just thought it sounded better. And at the time, I think, you know, it probably had something to do with either the renderer or the encoding process, but there probably was something that was prioritizing objects over the bed channels. These days, that's not the case. I've done pretty extensive testing between using a bed and using an object bed. It was one of the first things I found myself doing when I first got into Atmos, and I heard zero difference. Didn't hear a difference in the renderer, didn't hear a difference in exports, didn't hear a difference in MP4 exports. Sonically, the bed and objects, they are the same when it comes to Dolby Atmos. And in fact, is my understanding that as far as the renderer is concerned, the bed channels in the Atmos bed, they are actually objects. They just have fixed panning information. They don't need the metadata that Atmos sends to the renderer. There's not really a sonic advantage to it. And that's one of the main reasons why I don't use an object bed when I mix. And I'm not alone. There are other engineers out there who don't use an object bed. The object bed is, it is definitely an acceptable way of working on music for Dolby Atmos. There are a lot of engineers who use them, and there are a lot of great mixes that have been done using an object bed. But many of those engineers who use the object bed, they would tell you that if they were starting today, they probably wouldn't have done it because of the sonic difference. It's just not there. So if you're getting into Atmos right now, you don't have to use an object bed. But let me give you a couple more reasons why I don't use an object bed. I mean, for starters, the bed is there. It's already there. Why not use it? One of the things that's going to happen if you start using an object bed is your ADMs are going to increase in size. Using the bed is going to keep them a little more compact. I mean, not necessarily a little, depending on how creative you get. I mean, if you're using a lot of objects, you're going to have a bigger ADM. But one of the rumors going around right now as to why Spotify hasn't jumped on the Atmos bandwagon yet is that they just don't have the server space for all of the Atmos files. The ADMs we deliver, they are much larger than a traditional stereo mix. I would say the ADMs for mixes I've done for, let's say, a three to five minute song, they're generally around a gig to a gig and a half in size compared to stereo mix, which is what, maybe 50 megs? So it's a big difference because we have all of these extra objects and bed channels. If we are not using the bed in the ADM, we are basically encoding blank audio into the ADM. So it's just unused 
space. It's wasted space, in my opinion, because you have to have a bed in the ADM. Dolby won't let you create a setup without the bed. There's always a bed. You can't just do straight objects. You know, maybe you should be able to, but the bed is there. It's already taking up space. To me, it's more efficient and better to just use it. It wouldn't surprise me if in the future, independent releases are going to get charged for distribution based on the size of their ADM files, because the server space needed for this stuff, it, we're going to need a lot more. I mean, it is a larger file. So we'll see what happens on that, but it just, it wouldn't surprise me if the size of an ADM has something to do with how much distribution charges are. And if that ends up being the case, if you can put a mix together that is smaller in size in terms of final delivery, uh, you're probably going to be a little better off. Now, the other reason I prefer to use the bed has to do with the way Atmos fundamentally works. And there is a difference between having a bed and having an object. This has to do with something called arrays. This is a photo of one of the Dolby Atmos theaters I go to here in the Atlanta area. When I'm going to movies, I like going to see them in Atmos. Go figure. As you can see along the side of the theater, we have a lot of speakers. Those speakers, they're an array. So what is an array? What an array is, is it's basically, it's a group of speakers that are all getting the same signal. Now, this gets a little tricky in Atmos, so let me try and explain. Hold on, let's go to the theater view. All right, so let's say, you know, here's our theater view in the renderer. If this was a, an actual theater, you would probably have speakers dotted all along the side. Something that music engineers don't understand a lot of the time they're only working in the studio, is something called speaker coverage. This is a big deal for us in live sound. And when you get into a larger venue and a larger setup, this becomes an important thing. In our traditional movie theater, the left speaker, the center speaker, the right speaker, they are going to cover the entire audience. The entire audience is going to hear the content coming out of those speakers. When we get to the sides of the theater, though, like in this sort of theater, we would have speakers dotted all along the sides, as I said. Well, the speaker up here is only going to cover this portion of the audience. The speaker here is only going to cover this portion. The speaker here is only going to cover this portion. The speaker here is only going to cover this portion. This is why we have an array. The array gives us the ability to put the same content on the side and basically let the entire audience hear it. With an object, however, if I turn on our signal generator and put this in the side, with an object in Atmos, we get a discrete location. So even in this theater, with this array, panning an object to that position, it's only going to come out of that speaker. If I put it up here, it's only going to come out of that speaker. Anywhere we move this object, it is only coming out of those closer speakers. And I want to show you an example of this. I recently had the opportunity to listen to some Atmos mixes that I had done and some mixes that other guys had done in a larger theater environment. And I want to show you something. So this first photo this was a mix that was done with the bed. And you can see in here, the renderer, it probably looks a little different to some of you guys because you've got these gray boxes kind of wrapped around some of the speakers. Those represent the arrays. But what I want you to look at is I want you to look at the metering. You see how all of those meters are going for all of those different speakers? That to me is a great sign that this mix was done using the bed. It's exciting more of the speakers. You're getting more energy into the theater, into the space. Audience is going to hear the mix everywhere, for sure. 
Now let me show you a photo of a mix that was done with an object bed. You can tell it was an object bed because we've got all of these objects lit up in static positions. But the big telltale thing in here as well is look at those meters. We don't have nearly as much activity. And I took these photos in big sections of songs when everything was going. With the object bed, we're not getting as much energy into that space. The mix is probably going to be a little bit quieter, maybe. But there's also going to be information in that mix that people in the audience aren't hearing. When we played back some of my mixes where I had some key instruments that were going to objects and objects weren't moving, it was harder to hear them. They weren't speaking within the mix the way I've heard them in a lot of different Atmos studios. It was a very different thing. Now, some of you are going, well, who cares? People are only listening to Atmos on headphones for music, right? I mean, I don't buy into that completely. Yeah, it's a big component, but people are listening on speakers. But large speaker setups like this, yeah, I'll agree. There is a small amount of people who are going to hear Atmos this way. So why, why care? Why does this even matter? Well, for me, one of the big suggestions I have to my clients is... You could do a listening party in a movie theater, rent out a movie theater, listen to your, your new single, your new record, get, you know, a hundred or more of your fans in there and experience the album in Atmos in a big space. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point people just start setting up spaces to do this kind of thing, not even in traditional movie theaters. Well, with the object bed, it's not going to be the same experience for everybody. They're not going to hear all of the elements in the mix. And if they're key elements placed in different places in the room, that could be problematic. With the bed, though, to me, mixes that were mixed with the traditional bed, they scaled up a little better in that theater I was in than the object bed ones. So it's something that for a lot of you, yeah, you, you probably don't care. It probably doesn't matter. But for me, I want my mixes to work in as many places as possible. I'm not going to sacrifice creativity because of this large environment where things might get listened to a couple of times, maybe. But it is something that I think about. I mean, even when I was at the immersive event in Nashville this last year and some of the listening sessions we had, they were in larger studios, like set up in the live room with these bigger Atmos setups. And some of those mixes, depending on where you were sitting in the room, they were a little strange sometimes because of some of these techniques we've been using. So just something to consider, something to keep in mind. It's a fundamental part of the way Atmos works. Maybe it, it matters, maybe not. Maybe this is just, you know, something to have rolling in the back of your head about how Atmos works in the end. Not something that's going to make a big deal. But it is a consideration that I have. And, you know, you can... You can take, take it for what you will, do what you want with the information. So that's the object bed. I hope it helps you understand what it is. If you want to use it, yeah, go ahead and use it. There are lots of great mixes out there. There are also a lot of engineers who are just using the bed. So it's really up to you. I'd love to hear in the comments, do you use the bed? Do you use an object bed? Why do you prefer one over the other? Let me know. I mean, I think there are some creative opportunities that are out there if you are using an object bed that a traditional bed isn't going to give you. But I'll save that for another time. So leave a comment. Let me know. Object bed or bed. And I'll talk to you soon.